dearly beloved in Christ, at the outset, let me wish you a happy new year and a happy Pongal. The celebration that marks how to give thanks to the mother nature and ultimately the one who created the entire nature. Today, I thank God for the blessed opportunity that God has given to me to stand in front of you once again and to lead this worship and to deliver the word of God. As we move on to think about the given topic for us today, one Lord and one baptism, based on the given text such as Numbers chapter 11, verse 22 to 30, Psalm 23, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1 to 4, and John chapter 10, verse 7 to 18. Let us reflect and meditate upon all the great things God, that God has done into our lives and the way that God was leading so far in this world. So I was always having a question because I was from one of the remotest villages of Kerala. So there always there will be a Sunday worship and uh, at, at the end of worship. And I have seen many of my own church members were running to attend different worships. And for them, some pastors are favorite. For some, some places are favorite. And for others, uh, the way in which that other people are worshiping is favorable for them. So they will be running after worships and people uh, in search of real God that they say, but we need to really think about whether it is uh, true or not. So here the scripture, Holy Scripture says that we have only one Lord and we are baptized into that Lord. So this question is always in my mind. So what might be the reason for people taking, uh, going behind more than one worships and uh, people uh, going uh, behind more than one baptism? A couple of months back, I, I had an opportunity uh, to be in the Holy Land, uh, the, the land uh, before uh, become unholy. Uh, these days, uh, I, I, you all know that. So there I have seen many people are coming and they want to get baptized in the river where Jesus was baptized. So hundreds of people, group after group, so they were given a particular time and they will be coming and having worship and going into the Jordan River and uh, getting baptized again by a pastor. So this is also inspired me to think about why people are going behind uh, more than one baptism. So what I feel was when people feel that the power of the Lord that is in them is limited and they will be going for a new or, or the, the, the recharging of their batteries like we all know. But the scripture that we have read today gives us four important lessons. But at the same time, I am not interested to say that what are the, the, the problems when we go behind more than one baptism. But at the same time, today I would like to say that what are the advantages of sticking to the one God and in one baptism. The first lesson that we read today was Numbers chapter 11, verse 23 to 30. It says that God will transform you from ordinary human being to the miracle makers. If we are really loving one God, and if we are really sticking to the baptism that we have received, and the scripture says that we will be like a, a miracle make makers. Number chapter 11 verse 23 to 30, it is talking about the outstretched hands of God. God is asking to Moses, do you think that my hand is a powerless hand? And God is asking Moses to gather the 70 people whom God has called to bring around the tent. And God is taking a portion of the spirit from the life of Moses and giving to these 70 people. But when we read the, the passage, it is very clearly says, even though God has selected 70 elders, only 68 people gathered. You just read it. So two people, they did not come around the, 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 the tent, but they were in the camp. 
So what is happening when God selects a, f- a few people and it takes the spirit from the life of Moses and it tries to give it to these 70 people, wherever they are, they are receiving the spirit. Here, the difference, one baptism and one God, and when we really love one God, what is happening is very clearly written there. What is that? The problem was, that these 68 people, actually it is not very clearly mentioned there as 68 people only gathered there, but it is, as, as it is mentioned as 70. But when we read it clearly, we came, comes to know that it is only 68 people are gathered around the tent where the Ark of the Covenant was placed. So what is happening was, when these people received the power and they started prophecy. But what happens was immediately after that it is mentioned that they could not prophesy anymore. But at the same time, when the people were looking at the other two people, even though they were in the camp, the outside the tent, but they were continuing in the spirit and they were continuing in prophecy because they remained in the camp. So remaining in the camp is more important than receiving the power of God. So even if you receive the power of God and if you cannot be remain faithful in the Lord, it says that you will receive the Holy Spirit but it will not continue to stay in our lives. So here, when we remain in the Lord, God says that your hand will be the outstretched hands of God. God need not come into our context, but our hands will become the outstretched hands of God. When we read the Bible, there are a lot of examples. Exodus chapter 3 to 4, Moses chosen to... Moses was chosen to lead the Israelites out of Egypt and Moses performs miracles such as parting the Red Sea and bringing water out of the rock. When we read 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse 32 to 50, there it is mentioned that David, a shepherd who through faith in God defeated Goliath with a small sling and a stone. Judges chapter 6 to 7, Gideon, a farmer chosen by God to lead Israel against the Midianites, and Gideon achieved victory through miraculous signs. First King chapter 17 to 18, Elijah, a prophet who experienced God's miraculous provision by power, including calling down fire from heaven. And again, I got a blessed opportunity to be in the place where Elijah was performing this miracle. And 2 Kings chapter 2 to 13, Elisha, the successor of Elijah, performed numerous miracles, including parting the Jordan River and raising the people from the dead. Joshua 3 to 6, Joshua, under the, lead, under the leadership of Joshua, the Israelites witnessed the miraculous crossing of the, uh, the Jordan River and they became the, 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 the force behind the falling of the Jericho Wall. Daniel chapter 6, a captive from Babylon, Darius' faith in God led to miraculous deliverance from the den of lion. In the same book, Sadrak, Meshach, and Abednego, these three young men threw thrown into the fiery furnace and because they refused to worship the idols laid by the king, but God was with them as the fourth person in the fire. When we come to the New Testament, John the Baptist, Luke chapter 1, verse 5 to 25 and 57 to 80, born to elderly parents, and John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Spirit from birth and prepared the way for Jesus Christ. Mary, Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 38, she was a young virgin, become the mother of Jesus through a miraculous conception by the Holy Spirit. So the, such, if you look at the Bible, there are lot of examples that we can see one after the other how when we faithfully follow God, God is making them the miracle makers. But my dearly beloved in Christ, there is no use of listening all these stories. There is no use of listening all these stories as long as your name also be one in this list. I have mentioned almost 15 names, but listening to such stories will not make, will not give any kinds of preferences, but unless and until you be the number 16 in that list. 
So this is what God is looking from you. So to that, we should follow one God and we should believe in the one baptism that we have received. When we look to the, the, the psalm that we have read today, Psalm 23, the second, second point that it talks about God will help you to realize who is the right shepherd. Or God will help you to realize that not all who shepherd are shepherds. Psalm 23, we all know from our childhood, this very clearly says that we need to have a shepherd and God will help you to realize who is our real shepherd. Uh, there, is a, there is a movie in Malayalam, I don't remember the name of the movie, but in, in one, uh, one uh, portion, one, one place, uh, the hero, he was working in one of the, uh, the, the mountain ranges, and he got leave, and he is coming to uh, see his parents, he is coming back to his native place. So out of this excitement, he went to a telephone booth and calling uh, uh, his family members. Unfortunately, in his home, there were no telephones, so he is calling to a neighbor. So his parents and all reached to receive his call, and he was excitingly, he was saying that I got leave and I am coming back. So immediately, the owner of that house got an idea. So she received that uh, receiver and uh, said, talk to him and how, uh, how we see and everything. And at the end, she said, when you come, I know that this blankets will be very cheap there. Please buy one blanket for me when you come. So immediately realizing the danger, the person who called started pretending that he is unable to hear. So he said, what, what, what? And that this lady is shouting and shouting and shouting, please bring one blanket, please, please bring one blanket, please bring one blanket. But he was pretending that he is not listening, and then he cut the call. Then the, the, the telephone booth operator, he was saying, see, I could hear from sitting here what that lady was saying. Why you are not listening? Why you are not answering that? Then he said, if, it, if you heard, please go and give that uh, to her. See, many a time we think that God is far away from our prayers. No, God is not like that. God will listen when you firmly ground it in your faith. Bible says, even God will listen to you even before you ask. Even before you think, God will listen to your prayers. Different people, once there was, a, there was an, an apple field, and one uh, uh, an apple tree was full of apples. And ten friends were gathered around that tree, and they started taking one, one apples. They all eat from the same apple, apple tree. And at the end, one, pers one, one person started explaining what is happening. And one person said, it is really tasty. And one person said, no, its color is really, really nice. And another person said, its size is really nice. So 10 people said differently. At the end, they started fighting with each other. And at the end, what happened was they decided to cut off that apple tree. So this is what is actually happening when we go away from the real love of Jesus Christ. Many say that God is in my church, he's the real God. God whom I believe is the real God. The baptism that I have received is the real baptism. And if you want to go to heaven, and you should receive this baptism. But Psalm 23 shares the imagery depicting one baptism and one God as our shepherd who only can offer proper care, guidance, protection, and provision in six progressive stages. As a first stage, in a shepherd-sheep relationship, a shepherd guides and protects the sheep. In the relationship with God through baptism symbolizes entry into a relation where God becomes our shepherd. Second, in a shepherdship relationship, sheep recognizes the voice of the shepherd, indicating a close, intimate relationship between them. And the same way, in a relationship with God through baptism signifies a personal and intimate connection with God that, was, that we are baptized into the body of Christ that is the church. The third stage is in a, in a shepherdship relationship. A good shepherd cares for the needs of the sheep, provides sustenance and addressing their issues. In the same way, in a relationship with God through baptism, represents entry into the covenant relationship where God cares 
for our spiritual needs. The fourth stage in a shepherd-sheep relationship, sheep offer, often move together in a flock, fostering a sense of community and unity among them. In the same way, in the relationship with God through baptism makes our entry into the community of spiritual family. As the fifth stage in a shepherd-sheep relationship, the shepherd plays a role in the transformation of the sheep. In the same way, in the relationship between God through baptism signifies a spiritual rebirth and a transformation. And finally, in a shepherd-sheep relationship, a caring shepherd disciplines the sheep for their well-being. In the same way, in the relationship between God through baptism introduces us to a relationship where God as a loving father disciplines and guides us towards a life that reflects God's character, which is love. So here, God is helping us to understand who is our real shepherd. Once there was an old man and woman, they were in an old age home. And after long days of living together, they decided to get married. So one day, that man decided to go and propose to say, share uh, uh, his thoughts to that lady. So he went, and they were sitting for the breakfast, and uh, he said to her that I would like to marry you. Why don't we uh, uh, marry and live together as husband and wife? And she did not say anything, and uh, she said, okay, I will uh, think about it and I'll let you know. Uh, after one day, that a week passed, a month passed, and he was really curious to know what is uh, her real answer about. And one day again, he decided to go and ask about the answer. So he went again and asked her, uh, what that you think about it? And uh, uh, he was looking for a real answer from her. So she said, oh, is it that you that are proposed to me? But I said yes, but I do not know to whom I said. So many of the time, we are also confused with who is our real shepherd. Many a time, we will not know who is our real God. Who is our real God? The God, the real God is the one to whom you are going always. You just think about it, to whom that you are going always. And that person or that context will be the real God. And third, when we come to the New Testament, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1 to 4, it talks that God will make a way always out when you are really sticking on one Lord and one baptism. When I was my, as a child, actually I got a very serious sickness. And my father took me to hospital when I was a very small child. And this is the testimony that my father used to say to me. But he is no more. Uh, he passed away in 2018. And uh, I was admitted in the hospital but after three days, the doctor declared that the boy is dead. So, and the doctor said to take this dead body. And they were wrapped and gave it to, into his hands. And standing there in the hospital, my father, he prayed to God that if you give him life, and we will dedicate him for the ministry. Immediately, my father says, as, as a testimony, that immediately when these words came out of his my, mouth, the life came back into my life, it seems. Then I became a living uh, 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 a, a baby. And from that time onwards, when I am, I am ready to listen to the words of my parents, my parents used to say that you are dedicated for the Lord. You are dedicated for the Lord. So I was also decided, okay, I am going for the ministry. And one day, after my schooling, after my 10th, my mother took me to a priest for prayer. And my mother said to him that he is dedicated for the ministry. And he prayed for me. And at the end, at the end he said that he will not become a priest. He will not do the ministry. And I was shocked, and my mother started crying. And my mother asked, why, are you, why did you say that? And he said, you, your son, you have dedicated him for the ministry, but your son has not dedicated himself for the ministry. So there I understood the need of a real dedication. And I found a way out. I trusted in the Lord. And now I found a way out. And now I am standing in front of you as this. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 1 says that, the, our ancestors were under the cloud in the, in, the, in the desert. It is unimaginable thing. And much more than that is a passing through a sea and a making a dry land in the middle of the sea. But it is possible. When you trust in the Lord, when we are really firmly grounded in our faith, it is possible. And finally, I, 
invite you to the gospel portion that has been read to us today, John chapter 10, verse 7, uh, uh, 10, verse 7 to 18. Here, the summary is that God will help you to hear the heartbeat of God. Once you really found it in one Lord, and once you really believe that the baptism that I have received is the real baptism, and God will help you to hear the heartbeat of God. Do you know what is that heartbeat of God? The heartbeat to make you understand that Jesus is the real gate for you and me. The heartbeat to protect you and me from the thieves and the robbers. The heartbeat to make you pass through the right gate. The heartbeat to protect you from anyone who comes to steal and kill and destroy you. The heartbeat to give you life and the life in abundance. The heartbeat to lay down his life for the sheep that is you and me. And even the heartbeat to give life to the other sheep that is not belong to this fold. This is the heartbeat of God. To save you and me. To protect you and me. Even to love the entire creation. <coughs> that is the heartbeat of God. To listen to that heartbeat, we need to be founded in one Lord and we need to be founded in one baptism. Once there was a guru and his disciples, they were walking uh, by the river. And when they were walking, they saw a scorpion walking by the river. So here, after some time, they were walking parallelly. After some time, what happened was this scorpion accidentally slipped and fell into the water. So what happened was this guru stretched his hands and took this scorpion and kept it on the, on the ground. So before he is putting it in the ground, this scorpion bit the, the, the guru. It started paining for him. But he did not care. He just left it. After some time, again the guru saw, and this scorpion is again going to the water, and again it fell into the river. This guru again stretched his hands and took this, this scorpion and kept it uh, on, on the floor, on the ground. And again, when he was doing that, again this scorpion bit him. It was paining for him. He was, they were walking. When they turned back, again he saw that the scorpion is even walk, again walking and falling into the water. Again he came back and took that scorpion and kept it on the, on the floor. Again, the same thing happened. Before he is keeping it in the floor or the ground, it bit him again. They were walking. Again he was looking back. Again the scorpion was going into the water. Fell down. He took it out. It was beating him. Continued for many times. And his disciples was really shocked by his action and said, why are you doing that? How many times you saved this, this scorpion? But what did that, this scorpion did to you? Did it thank you? No, never. But at the same time, it was hurting you. Again and again and again and again and again and again. Whenever you are helping it, and it is hurting you again and again. Why that you are doing that? Stop it. Leave it. Let it live a life that it wants. Let it go and die or whatever that it happened, let it happen. But the scorp that this guru very silently said to his disciple, biting is the character of the scorpion, saving is my character. Biting is the character of the scorpion, but my character is to protect you. My dearly beloved in Christ, just think about your personal life. How many times God stretched his hand and protected you? How many times God saved you when you thought that this is the end of my life? But what that you have done back to God? Did you ever do like this scorpion? If it is like that, please remember that you are not believing in one God. But at the same time, we need a change of mind. And I urge you to have that passion, to love that one God, and to change our characters so that we will be reflecting God in and through our lives. So that to see God, they need not come to church, they need not go to some other pilgrim places, they can simply come in front of you and stand in front of you and see God. 
May God bless us through these words.